Hi, thanks for watching the video about uh, secure email. And uh, in this video, I will try to explain to you how to send encrypted email, but also explain a little bit behind uh, how it all works and why you should care about sending secure email. Um, I will go a little bit uh, rather quick through the first part of the of the presentation, the theoretical part. So this uh, this video has two parts: the the theory behind uh, how everything works, and the second part uh, when we will actually learn how to send and receive uh, encrypted email. And if I go kind of quick over this presentation. Uh, please go the, to this URL and this is where you will be able to um, to to check the presentation in uh, Google Slides. Okay, so the first question really before we get into any technicalities of, uh, of email is kind of drawing a parallel between uh, post office and how things used to work and, and, and email. So in this in this picture, you can see a German uh, German postman giving a letter. Uh, we assume it's a sealed letter, a confidential letter that nobody read uh, to this nice woman here. Uh, and from this picture, everything seems pretty nice. But do we really know if we can trust uh, that that postman or not? Or, uh, or anybody really who was in the process uh, of, of getting that mail from that person that sent it to this woman that is now receiving it. Um, and to maybe guide us a little bit or, or, or show us something, here you can look at the mailbox uh, by German Post. And you wouldn't be able to to see it uh, immediately or maybe realize, but it looks like a normal German, uh, German mailbox. However, it is uh, a mailbox from former Eastern Germany, uh, from the communist times. And, um, and maybe many people thought that their emails uh, or their mail uh, was, uh, was working just fine, that nobody, nobody was reading it. Uh, but they were a little bit wrong and they didn't know details of it until after the communist regime in Eastern Germany ended in, in 1989, uh, when, it came, when it became public that uh, in East Germany, the state security, uh, which was behind the post office or worked uh, in conjunction with the post office, was using something like this. This is the actual uh, picture of um, uh, of a machine that the Stasi, that's the, the name of the secret police in Eastern Germany, um, they were using this machine to open mail of people so people couldn't really tell that it was open um, and they were reading through people's mail and especially if you send a letter for example from Western Germany there was all, almost 100% chance that they were gonna look at it. Um, and maybe back in that time, uh, people kind of knew they were very skeptical. They wouldn't send anything through 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 mail, and they were aware that the state was watching over them. And that's a little bit different today because a lot of people don't think that's the case. And it's not just the state; it's also maybe your uh, maybe the the competitors or maybe people that don't like you for some reason that have some possibilities how to check your email. So. If you use whatever sort of email, be it Gmail or, 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 or your company email, you don't really know who is uh, reading your email. And so you really shouldn't trust the postman uh, when today it's the computer, computer program or, uh, or anything like that. So the way to deal with that, uh, if you don't want people to read your email, is encryption. And in order for you to understand a little bit how the process work, we need to uh, talk first about asymmetric key encryption. And for you to understand uh, the concept of it, look at this red thing here, which says uh, Alice private key. And, um, and then there is, uh, there is Alice, uh, Alice private key. So the red one, is private key and the 
and the green one as public key. So here we have a communication that goes on between Bob and Alice. So Bob says, hello Alice, and he encrypts it. And he encrypts it by a public key that he got from Alice. So it is green because this public key Alice can give to the whole world. She can give it to Bob, but if somebody steals it, that's fine. It doesn't really matter because the only, only thing that this public key that Alice has is good for is to encrypt messages. It's not to decrypt them, to decode them, to, to read what's in them. So Bob, in order to make that message only for, for Alice, he takes the public key, he encrypts it, and then the message looks here like a little bit of gibberish, and then he sends it over the internet, or he does whatever he wants to do with that, but in the process, nobody can read it. The only person that can decrypt it is Alice through her private key. So these two keys, they work in a pair. Every private key has a public key together. They kind of work together. And if you, if you change one of them, they don't really work anymore. So every private key has a public key and vice versa. So they only work together. So you generate a pair somehow or create a pair of these keys and they work together. And again, important thing here is to remember that the public key you can give to the whole world, but the private key you need to keep somewhere safe that nobody can get to it. And also the access to that key is, uh, is protected by password. So what happens when Alice receives uh, this message from, uh, from Bob, uh, she applies her private key, which means she needs to put some sort of password in there and uh, she puts that key in there and it decrypts the, the message and then she can read that Bob is saying, hello, Alice. So important public private key. We will work with that um, uh, in, a, in a little bit in practice, but you really need to understand uh, that this public key and it's symmetric because this key can only, only in, encrypt the message but not decrypt while this key is used to to decrypt them. Uh, now in practice how does it work and what do we uh, what do we use? Um, to encrypt our email we will use something that's called PGP and that stands for pretty good privacy. So when they invented this algorithm the the person that invented it was kind of skeptic, you know, skeptical about it. So they didn't call it excellent or military grade or, or something. They just called it pretty good privacy. Well, it turns out that it's really, really good. Um, and it's the best that there re really is for you to, uh, for you to, to be using uh, at the moment. Not only in the moment, but really for the last um, uh, quarter of a century, really. So... Uh, now to explain, uh, here on the left you can see uh, the process of encryption and on the other side process of uh, decryption. Um, so, you know, this is me, let's say I'm trying to send some emails, so here where it says data, just imagine that I have my email. Now, what happens? I write an email and then because I'm using using this PGP system, PGP program, whatever, I will generate some random key or the program will generate some random key for me and through this random key like in this case it's T-L-A-K blah 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 it encrypts um, my data so my data my email it gets encrypted with this key and boom here we have a little lock so it's encrypted fine that's pretty straightforward I think everybody understands that a program generates some random key and uh, it encrypts data and then it's encrypted yeah there's nothing really strange about it the 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 interesting part and maybe that that is a little bit more difficult for people to understand is what happens now with this with this key and how i pass it to the other 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 person so so at the same time when i encrypted this message or you know in the parallel step i also take this key the, this random key and I encrypt it in the, in the same way that the message got encrypted. So I, I have a message encrypted with this key and I have this key 
the, the key that encrypted the message, I encrypted uh, with a public key. Remember, that's the green key, that's the public key. And I'm sending this to, to Tom here. So I am taking the message, uh, I'm taking the key and I'm encrypting it with a, with a green public key of, uh, of Tom. And at the end, I have two things. I have a, a message that's encrypted with this random key, and I have the key, the random key, encrypted with public key of Tom. And I put these things together, and I can send it over the internet to Tom. So, now, when Tom gets the message, uh, it's a gibberish, it's encrypted. And throughout the whole internet, I, or however the message is going, is gibberish to anyone. Nobody can really read it. Well, Tom knows that I sent him uh, a message that's encrypted by PGP, or the program recognizes it in some way. So the first thing it does, it separates it in those two things that we had. So it separates it in a data that's encrypted and in the key that's encrypted. The key... Uh, can only be encrypted now by the private key that Tom has. That's the red key that we saw at the previous slide, the one that Tom has very safe uh, somewhere, stored very safe in some place. So he, he has it somewhere and he takes the private key and can decrypt the encrypted key that was sent to him and suddenly look this thing comes out this thing that we had at the beginning the random key so tom now gets this this random the, the this random key because he was able to decrypt it and when he puts it to the message boom he can read the email now what happened to this random key at andre's computer at the beginning well it uh, it disappeared it's no it's no longer there uh, so the only person, once Andre sends it to Tom, um, the only person that can open that message is the, the recipient. So even I can no longer look at that email. Well, there would be a way that I could look at that email if I encrypted it with number of public keys. And if one of those public keys was, was mine, then I would be able to, to see that as well. But... In this simple graph, when we are using just Tom's key, not even I am able to see that, to, to, to decode that message anymore because I, this random key gets lost, it's no longer there, and the only person that has it is Tom and it's encrypted. And in order to decrypt it, he can only, he can only uh, get it uh, through his, uh, through his uh, private key. And that's why he's the only one who can really read this um, read this message. So this is a little bit of, of, of theory how that works and maybe you want to study, you know, maybe read about it, maybe the video is not the best way for you to understand how PGP works, but I hope you have some idea how that works and that you need a private key and, and a public key for, for it to work and you understand a little bit of a process. So now I want to move on to the practical part. How is that going to work? So in order for you to be able to send encrypted messages, first you need to get some program, and it could be app, it could be extension, that will help you encrypt your, your, your emails. In, in this um, demo, we will use Mailvelope, which is one of the extensions, but PGP is universal. It's not tied to one program the uh, once you have that signature you know somebody can open it in an app somebody can open it with an extension somebody can open it with a program i mean it's really not important which program you use uh, as long as you have somehow imported or used the, the public and private key that's yours and of other people so then the second thing once we have that program we will need to create your public and private keys uh, a key pair and I'm assuming you don't have them because you're watching this video. If you would have already had them from the before, you would just import them, uh, but we will create them. And then in order for you to be able to communicate, you will need to send uh, and publish 
uh, or send or publish your public key to the people that you want to send them or for the people that that will want to send you the messages so I can only send you a private secured message if I know your public key. if I don't know it I cannot I cannot encrypt it so in order for me to send you something you will need to give me your public key and for you to send me something you will need to give me your public key so we need to exchange these keys and because they're public you can send them by email you can post them on the internet you can do you know there's a number of ways I can get to it there, there doesn't need to be some secret you know meeting where we exchange our keys or or anything and um, and so once you have the public keys of the people you want to communicate with then you can communicate with them and if they have yours um, so I think that's enough of the theory and uh, and we can move on to the practice so um, let's do it we are ready to do the encryption it's uh, it should really be simple so the first thing we're going to be looking at is uh, get the extension or get the program that will help us um, to use PGP through uh, browser extension. So for this, yeah, one of the options is to use the program called uh, Mavelope. And you're going to have two options. You're going to either be able to choose uh, Chrome extension or Firefox extension. They work more or less in a similar way. In order for it to work, especially for, for Firefox, uh, what you want to do first is check um, that your uh, browser version is up to date. So today it's the version 42.0 and it's correct. There is no update, so I shouldn't have any problems. You will probably, uh, if something is not working or if you cannot install it, that's probably the reason why. So I'm going to grab that extension. Um, and Firefox doesn't want to do that. I need to allow it and uh, I'll click. I'll allow this extension to get installed. Uh, yes, it wants to install the add-on. I will allow it to do that. And you notice that here uh, a little lock appeared and it's going to be very similar in Chrome as well if you are using Chrome. So we can close this and uh, and this the little pop-up will will uh, will come here. Uh, we can look at options and and from this point on it's, from this point on it's going to be very similar how this extension um, is working in either Chrome or in in Firefox. So in setup, you are able to, to generate the keys or import the keys in case you have them already. So I don't have a key yet. I'm going to say I'm a new user. So I'm going to generate a key and it's going to be fairly simple. Um, so uh, my name is Andre. Um, and... Uh, my email is Andre, uh, and I forgot what my email is, so I can tell you uh, exactly. Andre 2015 GPS test. So I'll just uh, I'll just go back here. So my email is gonna be Andre GPS test. 2015 uh, when the program decides to unfreeze uh, Andre 2015 G BGP test at gmail.com and this is obviously where you're gonna be entering your real data um, just uh, look at advanced um, it doesn't let you select uh, here, or you can you can select the 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 the, the key size. Uh, in other words, how secure your key is going to be, and if it expires, it automatically selects um, for thousand ninety six, and that's 
you know this is the best uh, what you should have so uh, you should you you should keep that I mean you, even if you selected the the previous ones you would be you would be fine but there's really no reason at this point to select them what it means that um, you are adding more years to the security of your of your key so i think 2048 is considered to be secure until 2020 or 2030 if you're gonna have 496 it's probably gonna be secure for much longer and uh, now you're creating a password so when we generate a key to access your private key you're gonna need your password and your password should be really secure so uh that's your protection of the key so if somebody copies your key uh, your password should be um, quite strong and i think in general um, especially for this sort of thing i would not be afraid to use a password definitely that's longer than 10 12 characters but don't be afraid to go above uh, above 16 uh, because once i have uh, have this uh, uh, access to your key I have access to all the things you're trying to protect so think about that and uh, now we're gonna generate the key it's gonna be a really simple process it can take uh, uh, it can take a little bit of a little bit of time uh, and um, and is generating the key um, and we are just gonna be waiting uh, for it for uh, for a little bit. It can, it can take about about a minute. And and we're just gonna have to wait. This is the computationally a little bit. Uh, takes a little bit of time to to generate this key it's uh it's quite a complex algorithm especially if you have the key that's uh 2096 uh, so it takes a little bit of time and so we're just gonna have to wait I mean, the faster your computer is, the faster the whole thing is going to be done. And look, we are already having a generated. So here on the bottom, it says success, new key generated, and porting into keyring. Perfect. That's kind of what we wanted. And that's what we wanted. And um, and ideally, if your computer is not frozen, you should be able to move on. And in this case, this is not the fastest computer on the planet, needless to say. So you don't have to worry about anything. There's no. We are really just waiting for, I think at this point. Um, And then what you wanna wanna do if your browser is responding, you just wanna go into into display keys. Uh, as long as you can go into display keys, and yeah, finally the computer woke up and we're able to to get there. Now you can see here my email address and uh, and the key. So I can look on those on those details which are 
which are here. So if you click the the e thing here, it will show you the the email and it will show you kind of the details of your key. And and that's good. And and you also have the option to to export uh, your key. Uh, so you should probably save these keys somewhere. These these keys somewhere in some some secure place. That would be a good idea. And you can click and download them, or um, but remember that these are both the the private and uh, and public keys. Um, there's other things that we really don't have to worry about too much, but maybe this is going to be a more interesting. So here you can see the public key that I have or that you're gonna have so if you click on that little E uh, and if your computer is behaving and is moving well you're gonna be able to see here your public key and this is the key that you um, you should be sending to people that you want to want to send um, so, so you'll recognize what key you're looking at that you click here, you see public key, you click here, you will see private key, which you definitely don't want to send to anyone. And, but even if you did remember, they would still need a password to get to that. But obviously figuring your password is, uh, you already made it one step easier for them because you send them your key. All they have to do is is use some sort of uh, way how to crack the password and they have your they have your key. Um, so yeah, you don't want to do that. But this is the key that you will want to send them. Um, so in this case, I wanna select this because this is the first thing that I'm gonna wanna be doing is is sending key to my friend. Uh, so I already have that and I want to work with Tom. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna send this key to him and and Andre's public key. So so I'm sending to Tom uh, my public key, but I could also put it on the on the internet or in any any way I want. So so I will I will need to share it so he can send me email. But in the meantime, so now I'm sending this to Tom. But in the in the meantime, you will notice that now on my browser I have this thing, which also changes a little bit how my Gmail now works. Uh, so if I'm gonna go um, to this email, uh, suddenly things start appearing that you don't know from from Gmail normally. So this is the email that so that Tom sent to me, and he sent me uh, his his public key. So I could either take it. And import it directly into uh, in, into the uh, into the mail envelope, or as you noticed before, if I'm uh, if I'm just hovering over over uh, when I come to that email, it already kind of does it for me. Uh, it figures out that somebody sent me a key. And there's a little plus sign. So Tom sent me a key. Uh, boom. It immediately goes into importing keys. And it, it already imported it. So my friend Tom was imported into keyring. Excellent. So if I look at my keys, now I have my key. And I have... Um, 
I have my public and private as I had before. I have both of them, but I also have Tom. And you will notice that for Tom, I only have his public key. Good. So now I have all I need to be able to communicate with Tom securely. How do I do that? Um, well, it's quite simple. Uh, I, you will see that suddenly this thing started of, uh, appearing in Gmail, which wasn't there before. Uh, it's thanks to this extension that's lingering here. Um, so I'm gonna be writing to Tom. Uh, yeah, so I can open it. So we're gonna be writing to Tom. And remember, people can still see that you're writing to Tom uh, and that he's writing to you. And they will even know the subject because you will not, uh, you will not, and this is typically something you don't want to do, right? Like something, it's a secret message to that immediately everyone knows that you're writing him something secret. So uh, something like greetings to your mom. Uh, and uh, you write, um, this is very secret message, for example, and you shouldn't do that because when you write it in here, it actually automatically saves with Gmail and it's no longer that safe. So it would be better to click here and it will open this special window that you some, uh, suddenly have. This is very secret message. And you write as you are used to, uh, secret message. And now you encrypt it. And look, um, here you have the possibilities for whom do you want to encrypt that. So uh, I'm already there automatically. Uh, so if I put there myself, it means I'm going to be able to read it as well once I send it. So that's a good thing. But I also want to encrypt it for Tom. And it's really good to keep yourself there because if you want to then later on see what you sent to, 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 to Tom or to your friends, you, uh, you would like to be able to read those messages and not just gibberish. So you, you have that. So encrypt it for Tom, encrypt it for myself. Boom. You see what happened? It suddenly did this. So the very secret message changed into that. You transfer that to Gmail. Boom. And now this is what you're going to be sending out. This is the message. Notice it kind of looks a little bit like that uh, signature that you got, but the signature, uh, that, uh, that key, except this is a message. It's a gibberish. You send it and boom. It is sent to it is sent to Tom. So when you look to Gmail and to everybody along the way, there is a message greetings to mom, and it kind of looks like this. Well, it doesn't look like this. It looks like this. But because we have we have this extension installed, we can just simply click and. In order to read it, we will need to put our very secret uh, password that we created when we created this private key. And now we can read it. The same thing will happen to, to Tom when he opens it. Without entering that password and having a private key, he will not be able, able to read it. So just to summarize what we need to do. First, we need to install the extension. Once we install that extension or when we, uh, when we, want, to, uh, when we want to adjust it or, or put new keys in, we clicked on the thing <coughs> and we generated our key. Once we generated the key, it will appear here. And if we want to share our keys, our public key, we have it here, so we can just simply copy it and send it, uh, send it by email. And if we want to import keys, we can also copy it in here and, uh, and import it. Or 
as we did before when somebody sends us a key and we have the extension this little key will appear and in this case we already did that uh, so it will probably update uh, the key or do something like that it just depends on the program uh, but it's uh, it's really just just that so with that we are able to uh, uh, send email remember you should be editing those emails in that window not in gmail window anymore so here secrets secrets and then once you hit encrypt uh, you need to select the recipients and if you have more that's fine uh, in this case uh, I want to I want to be able to read it once I send it I want to be able to come to read it so it will encrypt for both of us both of us will be able to read it and then you transfer it into gmail and it's there and then obviously you select the recipient and the subject as, uh, as well um, so i think this should pretty much uh, explain how uh, how it works so in this case again uh, i'm gonna send it to tom message to boom it's sent and um, and Tom in some way I mean we can look at Tom's uh, Tom's email and Tom will be able to to look at it and provided that he has the extension installed he will be able to uh, to read that email and uh, and if he has other program he can just copy that uh, that that message in his program which doesn't have to be in gmail and again read uh, read the email so this is we are looking at tom's email uh, how he received it so to google this is totally invisible uh, they they know that you are sending a message from one person to another but they don't know what you are talking about they cannot give you any advertising based on that um, if anybody goes into your gmail um, they they won't be able to know what uh, what messages you um, you sent and if you want to see what you sent you always have to have uh, that uh, that extension or add-on installed uh, and then yeah you want to be able to see that and if you don't then um, you need to take the message and copy that in some program and use your key to, to read that so if uh, uh, if you think uh, it works what you, or if you think you understand what you should do uh, what you should do now is uh, or if you want to try it you can send um, me your public key to andre2015 pgp test at gmail.com send me your key and uh, and uh, yeah you should already have my key and we can uh, we can we can test it okay so Thank you very much for uh, for your attention and hope uh, you now understand her, how uh, PGP and uh, email encryption works. So thanks for your attention.